and it was very successful in the bed testing uh, theater a couple of years ago. And uh, we went because uh, the last film we did was also based on Savion River, and it's called The Valentina's Mother. It was here, shown I think three years ago, something like this. Uh, so uh, we went to see the play, and we loved it. Uh, then we get a bit scared because the audience uh, most of the time laughed and saw it as a comedy. <coughs> and we weren't sure that this is the thing we want to do as a comedy. Uh, so we start working with Savion and we walk about it on the street together, me and my partner, by the way, which we co write and co direct. Uh, and, and tell you a little bit about this. Uh, so it was, we worked seven months on the script, and it was not so easy to do because it's apparently for me, first time trying to adapt a play is a bit tricky because you don't, something that works on theater doesn't necessarily work on film, and you don't know exactly what. So it was a lot of. Uh, experimenting and um, we actually when we finished the film we thought it's a nice film we didn't laugh at all during editing and we thought that we lost the human side of it at all and when we did the first screening and the audience laughed in, in the right place for us it was a relief and we do actually believe it so, and then it gets more and more involved. And uh, it's so, uh, this is a very interesting journey with this film. And um, from the religious side of it, did um, did Betty Savion rebirth of this in any way coming from her experiences? What kind of research was done? I take it you're not an Orthodox man. Um, but uh, what kind of um, research was done to make the religious side authentic? <laughs> what happened is that we know Sadon is a very secular, and my partner is a secular, and I'm ultra secular, <laughs> from an ultra secular family. My grandfather was a communist in Russia, <laughs> so he was against religion, it's like very fanatic against religion. So we sat in Tel Aviv writing the script and really felt. <laughs> bit bad that we actually don't know nothing about this world. And we got very nervous, so uh, we decided to do something about it. And we started to speak with a lot of uh, uh, advisors from the community, and the more we researched them and talked to them, we realized that they, everybody said something different. And it was a revelation for us that we look at the ultra-orthodox world as one world, which is basically not actually exists. There's so many layers, ways, and interruptions. And so you just have to, sometimes you just have to really get because in one way, we had four advisors, and in one scene, they just start to argue with each other. <laughs> <laughs> we just said, okay. And it was also a relief because we understand that there's not one way to do it. So if we're out screwing up something, then <laughs> we can say, this is the, this family, this is how she does that. So, and, but it's true. I mean, every family, every community, even small family has different customs. And they sang the praise a bit different. And it depends how close, how really uh, you are very uh, more religious or less religious, or you're more strict or less. So it's a big difference in the customs and the prayer. You can always count on Jews to argue and, uh, and disagree. Um, before we open it to questions from the audience, I wanted to ask just about the casting of the film. Uh, beautiful cast. How did you select the people who tell us a little bit about the background on the cast? Uh, the, the, the main lead, uh, Moan, the young girl, uh, we saw on a film called For Them, and she played Arabic girl there. And she was wonderful. And when we started to write the script, we thought about her in our, in our heads, but we didn't. We sure that she's gonna be actually casted, but we saw it in in our imagination. And so we were very lucky to have her. 
And after that, we do a lot of auditions, even to very famous uh, Israeli actors. We believe in auditions. Uh, and in, in the auditions, you saw exactly who was just perfect for the job. Very clear. Uh, Shlomi, the, the father, and the mother, uh, Raymond, and they were just exactly the type. The only type we did wasn't sure was the young kibbutz guy, Alicia, who is not an actor actually, he's a singer. And he came to the audition, he didn't know the, the, the text very well, and we thought he's nice, but, but we did a second audition and a third audition, and because we had something else in mind as a character, that he totally changed uh, our point of view and decided let's go with him and see what happens. Nice. We'll take a question, a couple of questions from the audience. Okay, Tom, we'll go around with the mic. Everybody. Yeah, we have down here on the time. I was very impressed with the film, and I felt like you know, it would be nice. It's not working. It would be nice if this film uh, could be seen in the um, in the religious, the Dati community of Israel. I, I feel that there are things in the film that they could, um, apart from showing fairness of sin, I don't think that's so bad. But I think that you saying the name of God in the prayer would absolutely make it impossible to ever share your film with them. I think that would be considered too much a violation of the norms of the block. Yeah. I, it's, uh, it's hard to tell because the, one of the advisors that we had was uh, Ultra Autodox. He mm had -hmm. the iPhone, he knew exactly all the movie stars in his bed. He knew everything about our world and we were a bit shocked. We thought that those people doesn't uh, want to know. But it seems that they actually know much more than we think. Mm -hmm. And I, I felt that it's not as fanatic as it used to be. Even mm -hmm. Both Orthodox Jews today are different, mm -hmm. and uh, what's different is also, also the, uh, how they uh, see women, because it's mm -hmm. a, a lot of people from the Orthodox world talk that it's very rare that this thing will happen actually. It's mm -hmm. not happening. We thought it could be more uh, of a um, no, normality, but they said no. It's no. A, it will be. Very, very rare, actually, that you would see a father acting like that. And that, that was a happy uh, thing for us. Maybe not so good for the film, but it was... Uh, uh, I felt uh, it's more modern than you think. So I, they can see the film if, if they... Um, I mean, if they would go, I think they can. Uh, but the film was released in, in Israel, and it's uh, I'm assuming playing in Jerusalem as well. And yeah, very well in Jerusalem, one of the strongest. Um, and that's one the strongest markets. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, that's a market that's 70% Orthodox. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, hopefully that means some people are seeing it. Um, we got a question up here. Is that, oh, sorry, sorry, got a mouth. Hold on, man. Hold on one second. The microphone's up there, and uh, we have a question up there. Yeah, first of all, I want to tell you it was a marvelous film. I thought you did a fantastic job, and I enjoyed it. The one thing that I would have maybe appreciated is you took one ultra-Orthodox man who was a tyrant, an absolute horrible person, and you put your lens on that one family. I think it would have been nice, since you yourself said there's so many variations, take a few nice families from the ultra-Orthodox <laughs> so that you show that the community what we did, you're actually right. What we did, yeah. okay, uh, the movie is also will be uh, screened as a mini series in, uh, in television. And there's another 50 minutes that is showing the kibbutz, more about the kibbutz, and showing how the kibbutz is also a fanatic uh, way of life. So this is, uh, so the movie is, we don't have it here because then it will be a three-hour film, but we actually thought about it because we didn't want to show the Orthodox is only for now. It's not true. Yeah, so we try to uh, balance it. 
from Pippi Woods, so I should sure. also heard from other people you speak. Not now. Thank you very much. We have one more question over here. Okay. How close to the book does the film stay? Because I read the book a long time ago, and I love the book. I, I love the movie, but I don't remember if this is it close. Is it close? No, because the book is only seven to ten pages. It's the main character of the book is Victoria's mother, actually, who and the book is about her uh, trip from the kibbutz after she saw her daughter back to her Jerusalem, which is totally different. Uh, no. Very, very cute, yeah, very cute, very cute. And I'm sure all the uh, teenagers in Israel now are very grateful that they don't have to read the short story. <laughs> Matthew, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Folks, tomorrow night um, we have, uh, we're back again with films at 9, starting at 9.30 p.m. Sunday films all day, and then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and even Thursday. Uh, more great Israeli films. Tell your friends, grab some brochures, take them to synagogue with you, and give them out. Shabbat shalom to everybody. Thank you very much.